Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include The EU begins a debate on energy and climate rules amidst crisis. Welsh EU funding cuts cushioned as UK government reallocates the funds. EU agrees Orwellian border strategy with Moldova. European Commission issue new rules to make broadband internet installation 30% cheaper. Plus, ministers alarmed over new EU bid to seize control of our justice system. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, the EU Commission is making further moves to leverage control via the UN Agenda 21 model. While the 27-nation bloc is making good progress towards its 2020 goals to boost the share of renewable energy and cut greenhouse gases, a framework for the subsequent decade is needed. The Greens, who still appear unable to see the woods for the trees, stated a great number of reports from various international organisations have underlined the threat of a rapidly changing climate to our economies, our security, our natural resources and our food supplies. The Commission has said it wanted to present concrete legislative proposals towards the end of this year. We reported last year that EU budget reforms would likely represent a 5% reduction in support spending within Wales. Transition from active primary resource generation to tertiary services and tourism has been a difficult and economically painful task in Wales. This article reports on restructuring by UK government to try to cushion the impact of the EU budget reduction. This EU funding merry-go-round fascinates me. National governments raise taxes to increase payments to the great EU kleptocrats in Brussels, who then reappoint it back to the governments, who then give it back to the people. That's, of course, after it's been skimmed at each transaction point. Just in, and rolling through our pipeline section, awaiting a vote from the nodding dogs in the hemicircle, this report on new visa facilities between the EU and Moldova. One key point that could be setting the precedence further down the line, and I quote, holders of biometric passports can enter, leave and transit through territories of member states. Now it doesn't say whether the biometrics are retinal scans, barcodes on the forehead, chips in the hand or DNA tracking. However, this is a legislative move that we will be keeping an eye on. She's back with another digital framework directive. Our tech-savvy VP of the EU Parliament, Neely Crows, has said... Everyone deserves fast broadband, and I want to burn the red tape that is stopping us from getting there. The European Commission wants to make it quicker and cheaper to get that broadband. And so, in the true spirit of red tape burning, the European Commission is proposing a new set of regulation that could reduce the cost of rolling out high-speed internet by up to 30%. The ruling will increase the burden of red tape for property developers requiring that all newly constructed buildings are equipped with a high-speed ready infrastructure, right up until the network termination points. The same would apply for any buildings undergoing major renovation works. Britain and other countries will be rated on a series of measures including how quickly trials come to court and how many offenders are convicted. But in Whitehall, ministers suspect the initiative is simply a new power grab by Brussels. Ah yes, ministers of Whitehall, I see you've been paying plenty of attention. This will be the framework for legal centralisation of powers, as defined in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 1048, agreed by Margaret Thatcher in the Single European Act, enacted by John Major in the Treaty of Maastricht, and action for implementation by Gordon Brown in the Lisbon Treaty. Just for the record, FCO 1048 states... Community law is required to take precedence over domestic law. If a community law conflicts with a statute, it is the statute which has to give way. A government source said, this is more mission creep from Brussels. They are once again meddling in something that should be an internal matter for member nations. Mm. Uh, no, it's not mission creep, it's mission enactment. Perhaps the government source should go and read the documents. <laughs> 
Today in our video library, after the drama of Cyprus, the lending troika is skeptical about the merger between Greece's two biggest banks. The country insists it can handle recapitalization and the finance minister has assured Greeks their deposits are safe. He also promised there'll be no tougher austerity, but lenders are pressing for further severe job cuts in the public sector, insisting that a massive 25,000 workers be laid off this year and a total of 150,000 by 2016. Just like we saw in our report on Portugal last week, unemployment is also driving Greeks away from their country. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below.